Hi guys, Dr. Orna Isaacson here. I am talking to you from one of my very favorite places in the world with two of my favorite, very favorite plants. Um, I'm talking to you from outside of Homer, Alaska, where I'm on vacation this week. And I have two plants here that are two of the three plants that in my, that from my experience really epitomize Alaska for in my experience of Alaska. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and we'll talk about them for a minute. So this plant with all the white fuzz on it is fireweed, the tall fireweed. Used to be Epilobium angustifolium. Now it's Camarian angustifolium. It is in the same family as evening primrose. And this is how it goes to seed. I'll show you some pictures in a little bit of it in flower. There's some left in flower here. Um, but after it flowers, these are the seed pods. And when they split, they kind of split in half like that, in quarters like this. And all this fuzz comes out. So like dandelion seeds, they float on the wind. Be free, be free. And this guy gone to seed is Heraclium lanatum, also known as cow parsnip. Up here, where there's a lot of Russian influence, it's also called pushki. Um, and so I think of it as pushki a lot when I'm up here. And we have this down in Oregon, down in what I consider Baja Cascadia. And here are the leaves of it in my shadow, which you don't need to see. And it's interesting how plants are different depending on where they grow. Down in Oregon, I was taught that you can use the seeds um, in a low-dose vinegar or tincture as a digestive aid because it's super aromatic. But up here, the growing conditions are such that the leaves make this oil that is really, it causes burns and like even blistering burns, sort of like poison oak and poison ivy down by us. So people up here are not so fond of it um, and it's really hard to dig out. So where I am is just on the side of a road and you'll see this all over around here. Fireweed is a traditional food and traditional medicine. In the spring, you can eat the early stalks, the early shoots, like asparagus. The way I use it most, however, in my practice is as a flower essence. Here, here are some flowers, the last little bits of the flowers. It flowers from the bottom up, so these are, the, these are obviously the, the flowers at the end. Wee, windy. Um, I use it as a flower essence where one of the things it's really good for is letting go. So anything that you need to release, it can be really helpful for that. And also for um, healing, recovering from trauma. A lot of the fireweeds grow in disturbed areas. So they come in after fire or after floods. So you can see they're one of the first colonizers because their um, because their seeds can come in from far away. So you can see how that might be something that might be appropriate for cleansing, detoxification in the sort of mental emotional sense, and for healing disturbed internal emotional landscape. The pushki or cow parsnip flower essence I use in practice a lot for people who are feeling dislocated, for people who don't feel like they have a right to be where they are, for people who are not in their correct bioregion and need to ground. When I came up here the very first time to Homer, it was to do a practitioner training with Steve Johnson of the Alaskan Essences Company. 
and it was a seven day training and one of the essences we made in class was a pushki flower essence and i had a pretty dramatic response to it where it really helped unlock um, and unlocked some trauma that was keeping me from really doing the things that i needed to do in the world so this is one of my favorites and also the very first time i came to alaska at all when i got off the ferry this was one of the first plants i saw and it sort of felt like I was being welcomed by a familiar face. So that's a lot of how I think of Pushki as a flower essence. And up here, I would not use it as an aromatic. You would not want to take this internally up here. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed meeting some of my plant friends. And if you know them from where you live or you know them from up here, I'd love to hear what you think about them or how you use them. And again, thank you for joining me, Dr. Orna Isaacson. Bye.